Hello everybody. Now I'm going to tell you about the coverings of the kidney. And they are actually not only the coverings, but they are actually the supports of the kidney. Kidney to be held in its position needs supports, the ligamentous, the fibrous supports. So that also I cover here. So now let's talk about the coverings of the kidneys. Kidney, you know, when you're seeing a kidney, you will find the first covering that is the capsule of the kidney. On outside, you find is a glistening surface. Sometimes it, it is even, you know, what I'm lifting it, can you see? Sometimes it is even easily to peel, the, peel it from the surface, right? So it's easy to peel it from the surface. And this is a glistening thing. What you're seeing is the capsule. So this, the first immediate lining, the intimate lining of the kidney is a thin, mem a thin fibrous membranous layer covering the kidney from all the sides. One important thing is remember that this fibrous capsule of kidney in this goes within this renal sinus, right? From the, you know, through this uh, renal, uh, renal artery vein and this renal pelvis was attached. There's a depression that called renal sinus. So this capsule reaches within the renal sinus. So that was the first layer. Then outside to this renal capsule, thin fibrous membranous capsule, what lies outside to this, that will be a pad of fat surrounding the kidney from all the sides. And that is called perinephric or perirenal fat. So this perinephric or perirenal fat which surrounds the kidney from all the sides is actually thin on the anterior and posterior surface but it is more thick on the lateral border as well as this perineal fat what you see here all the yellowish colored thing this is all perirenal this yellowish colored thing all this is perirenal fat which fills up the uh, space here in the renal sinus right so this is perirenal fat and this perineal fat is more thick on the little body. Got it? Now, this of course is like a cushion flying to this kidneys. Then, outside to this perirenal or para, uh, perirenal or perinephric para fat, there will be covering of renal fascia. Now, renal fascia is just like any other fascia you have in a normal, it's a deep, it's a form of a deep fascia, fibrous connective tissue. So it covers the kidney from both anterior and posterior surface, right? So you have a renal fascia anterior and posterior as well. It will have an extension above, below, lateral and medial, right? So this renal fascia, the anterior surface is also called by another name by the term of this scientist. So that's anterior level of the renal fascia is called fascia of girota. So fascia of girota is the anterior layer and posterior surface of the renal fascia is called fascia of zuckerkandl. So fascia of zuckerkandl is posterior layer and fascia of girota is anterior. Now I'll talk about the extensions of this, right? So this anterior layer and posterior layer, what happens when it reaches medially? So remember the anterior layer of the renal fascia when it reaches anteriorly it merges with the anterior layer of the opposite kidney. So the anterior layer of both the kidneys merge together in front of the spine. Got it? Then about the posterior layer. The posterior layer that's fascia of Zuckerkandl. The posterior of the renal fascia when it extends medially it reaches and joins the vertebrae, the lumbar spine. It merges with the periosteum of the lumbar spine, the posterior layer. Got it? Okay, then about the lateral extension. So, lateral extension, what is called, uh, you know, the two fascia, the two layers fuse, and that is called lateral conal ligament, right? Lateral conal ligament, and that lateral extension of this both the layers anterior and posterior layer they merge little corner ligament that extends and then it merges with the parietal peritoneum got it 
okay then about its um, vertical and you keep upward extension so remember the upper extension uh, is actually not blending the two layers and in and posterior they stay separate so what is actually there is an open space here of the kidney which actually reaches is in relation to the bearing of the liver right so this anterior layer I'm talking about this because till now what I taught you about the medial and lateral extensions they are same for both the kidneys but now what I'm talking you is about the superior extension of the renal fascia this will be different so the anterior of the renal fascia which extends above on the right side it actually you know there's a liver placed here on the right look the liver posteriorly there's this barrier of the liver and there you have a triangle and a coronary ligament so the inferior border or the inferior layer of the coronary ligament there it actually goes and merges the anterior layer merges with the inferior layer of the coronary ligament on the posterior aspect with the right lobe of the liver behind i mean and this pole reaches in relation to the barrier of the liver on the right side got it now the posterior extent posterior ex extent of this kidney on both the kidneys will actually be the same that the posterior that's partial zucal kernel that will extend up and will blend with the fascia covering the muscles of the posterior frontal wall that is blends with the fascia of swas major quadratus lambora and fascia transversalis and the uh, transversal subdominus then it even extends above and you know there's a diaphragm then i told you this posterior it's related to the uh, kidney was related to the diaphragm so under to the diaphragm there is infraphrenic layer of this uh, fascia so this superiorly merges with the fascia covering the diaphragm from below correct and this will be the same in both the kidneys now talking about the superior extent of the renal fascia in the left kidney so anterior layer that's fascia of gerota then it extends upwards and it merges remember here was a gastric impression right this much was here was stomach placed and here was the spleen placed right what is in between the spleen and stomach the greater curves of the stomach and the spleen that is gastrosplenic ligament right so it's like you know gastrosplenic ligament and derivative of dorsal with the gastric so this fascia gerolta on the left side extends upward and merges with the gastrosplenic ligament got it now the posterior that's fascia zucker kernel on the left side when it extends up that will be the same as on the right side as well from the left side also it goes up and merges with the fascia of the muscles that is swas major quadratus lumborum and uh, transversus abdominis it merges with the fascia covering those muscles and further it extends up and it merges with the fascia on the under surface of the thoracic abdominal so now you got it that this is actually also called suspensory ligament of the kidney because you know the two layers anterior and posterior layers they are reaching up and is attaching to the surfaces above to that so what actually is providing support to the kidneys both the kidneys they have to be suspended you know retained in their anatomical position so there must be some anchorage right so these uh, superior extension of the cerebral fascia is also called suspensory ligament it provides support to the kidneys not only this but of course all the extensions medial extension lateral extension they, they are also providing support to uh, to fix the kidney in their anatomical position what remains is now the downward extension of the cerebral fascia so the downward extension is the, this uh, you know both anterior and posterior they they continue down along with the ureters they continue down along with the ureters behind you know this ureter also is a retroperitoneal structure so the two layers will continue you know downwards anterior i mean you know continuously with the ureter they will blend down and reach and blend with the fascia iliaca that is a fascia covering the iliacus right and will continue as you know pelvic fascia 
so that is like the downward extension remember downward both the both the layers they descend down along with the ureters then they merge use with the fascia iliac got it and remember ureter also is a retroperitoneal structure so now that was about the fascia now what will lie outside because of what i'm telling you is on the coverage of the kidney right now even outside the renal fascia there is again another layer of fat and that is called paranephric or paragrenal para fat this fat surrounding to the renal fascia on all sides again is more abundant and more thickened posteriorly and inferiorly so remember this paranephric fat is not very much you know thick anteriorly but it is thick and more abundant posteriorly and more even in the lower pole behind the lower pole of the kidneys so what happens is kidney gets a very much cushion like effect on which it rests and you know there are the paravertebral gutters you know when you, you dissect out the posterior donor wall you find the midway the spine then you have this muscle sloping downwards a little bit that's sos major quadratus lumborum and again it will elevate up with the help of this transverse and this abdominis so actually there is gutter space created to the called paravertebral gutters if you lie around in this point position that's a dependent position so this paravertebral gutters in case of upper lumbar upper lumbar segments is filled up by paranephric parapet so this paranephric parapet is providing one thing is filling up this paravertebral space paravertebral gutters it is providing cushion and of course is also maintaining the anatomical position of the kidneys if this fat paranephric perinephric it uh, you know it uh, somewhat gets dissolved right so what happen is when there is less of para fat the kidney because of its 150 gram weight right so what happens is that the kidney sinks down from its anatomical position like if a person is a uh, starving from a week so there will be you know gradual elimination of the fat from this you know stored fat so that is all what happens is this reduced amount of paranephric fat so kidneys will actually descend down from its position so when it descends down there will be kinking of the kinking of the ureters and that will lead to hydro ureter got it so that was about the uh, paranephric fat so what once again you never remember the coverings of the kidney first thing is thin fibrous layer that's renal capsule then you have a perinephric para perinephric or you know the two synonyms nephric and renal perirenal or perinephric para fat then you have renal fascia and then you have paranephric or para renal para fat all right so that was about the different coverage of the kidney and it's done